Yes, my dear friend, welcome back to the channel. It is a beautiful, beautiful Tuesday morning here in Southeast Asia, Malaysia to be precise. Wherever you are on the globe, you are highly welcome to this Tuesday morning edition. Yes, yes. Chelsea, Liverpool, it all over. We need to look forward to the next game on Thursday. Yes, Conference League. Dear friends, over the weekend or next weekend, it's going to be Chelsea, Newcastle. Currently, as we speak, yesterday, the, pre pre the players, they were in Cobham for recovery. They were in Cobham for recovery. Right now, as we speak, there has not been any reported injury as of now. So we are glad we still have our squad intact. Fa one or two fatigue here and there, definitely. After a game like this with Liverpool, definitely there one or two fatigue. The players, they went through recovery and all is going well. But you see, quickly, our head coach, speaking about our goalkeeping department, most of us will complain a lot about Robert Sanchez. I also complain a lot about him. But it seems to me our head coach have no problem at all with our goalkeeper. I don't know if it's one of those man management, you know, tactics or strategy. But it looks to me, Enzo Maresca have no problem at all with, with Robert Sanchez. And this is what he said. What I'm saying, this is what he said. He said, I'm very happy with Robert Sanchez. He's doing fantastic with us. Not only in a building from the back, but also making saves. He told BBC. Not only in a building from the back, but also in making saves. Well, what else do we have to say? We that are crying that Chelsea need a better goalkeeper. I am not too sure, but I believe that he's sending wrong signals to the owners, to our, to our sporting directors. If it's just our man management, then he is sending the wrong signal. Or maybe he's managing the player in a way that the player can improve. He doesn't want anything that will distract or disturb the player's confidence. But privately, he might be talking to the ownership and our sporting directors about the challenge so far. That is another way we need to look at it from, another angle. Oh yes, it's very possible that he's been talking to the sporting directors about the situation, but publicly, he wants to make sure he builds the confidence of the player. That, is, that could be the issue. Well, wherever you are on the globe, especially on the continent of Africa, in Europe, in America, Canada, Australia, or right in Southeast Asia, ladies and gentlemen, you are highly welcome. Beautiful day indeed. Now, moving forward. Nicholas Jackson. Jackson currently scored the only goal for us against Liverpool. And it looks to me that many of us, we are really not following Jackson's development. Nicola Jackson that we know last season and the Jackson that we have currently. You see, many of you think I'm just following or I'm just supporting Jackson blindly. No, I am watching him carefully. I am watching him carefully and I know exactly what to, what to say about him each time I watch Jackson play. Ladies and gentlemen, you see, Jackson's finishing is actually reaching a point where you have to ask yourself. His finishing is actually reaching a point where you have to ask yourself, does this Chelsea team really need a striker? Like everyone of you keep saying, does this team currently need another striker? As everyone of you kept saying, if you have Jackson and Nkuku, why do you still think you need a third striker. Meanwhile, we have McGuay there. Looking at the goal Jackson score against Liverpool, dear friend, it is a very good goal. It was a very good goal. I understand. I understand that we want a striker that can just come in and is scoring goals left and right. This, this is not easy. If it's so easy, even Haaland could have been scoring five goals in a game, in every game. But it is the number of opportunities that Haaland gets in the, in the area. The game against Liverpool, how many clear-cut chances did, did Jackson got? Can you tell me how many clear-cut chances? Even the chance that he got, the, another chance that he got, he hit the goalpost. He struck very well and very hard. Dear friends, well... We wait to see. Now, I want to go into the tactical aspect of the game. Chelsea Liverpool. On your screen right now. Chelsea Liverpool. Tactical aspect of the game. You see, Chelsea 
had a bad fall. But in most cases, if we start to build up, we build up with our left hand defender, which is usually uh, uh, Marco Crella, or in this case, it was uh, Malogusto. From that left side, we build up from that left side, and so it always has been, it, or it was against Liverpool, it was Levi Cowell, Tosin, and then Rhys James on the right side. Now, we, that Levi Cowell, our goalkeeper Sanchez formed the fourth person. He is not on his line. Our goalkeeper always moved forward to form the fourth person anytime our left back goes up front trying to invert. You could see very clearly as I mark the blue line. When Gusto was up the field, up higher the field, our goalkeeper stepped forward to form the four man back. He left the, the line. Now, at the center, at the center, that is where you could see clearly. Sometimes you will see Romeo Lavia or Moes Casaido. That is a DM. I'll show you something that Liverpool did very well in this game. Okay, before we move on, look at it here now. Now we when our goalkeeper stepped back into the box. When our goalkeeper step back into the box, you will see our left back coming back to form the same shape. The same shape with the other defenders, with Levi Powell and Tosin, the other defender, as you can see right there, and then uh, Rhys James. We are back to shape again because at that moment, we are now to defend. The ball is facing us. We are not building that at that moment. Then you can also clearly see Le Romeo Lavia and Casado not too far from each other. Their partnership, they were not too far from each other. That is a pivot. The, the, the gap between them is not wide. The gap between them is not wide. This is how we defended. Now, when we are attacking, Whenever we receive the ball and we are attacking, I didn't mark Malogusto, that's our left back. I didn't mark where he, he, he is, but he's close to the middle line. He's close to the center line. At this point, Jordan Sancho has already received the ball. I second Jordan Sancho because this is where Chelsea had the major problem. As you can see, the blue mark around Jordan Sancho. I mean, yes. From Jordan Sancho, you will see Nicola Jackson, then Cole Palmer before Madweki. Now we attack with four fronts. You could see clearly the formation there also. But where Chelsea could have had a breakthrough was for Jadon Sancho to be able to beat his man. In this case, on several occasions, Jadon Sancho could not. If Jordan Sanchez was to be able to beat his man, he would have always get the ball through to either Kopama, I mean Jackson or Kopama. Or even sometimes far away to Madweke. But that did not happen. Dear friends, so you could see what we were restricted. Jordan Sancho was our biggest flop in the game against Liverpool. I am not too sure that the, the instruction that our head coach gave. But our failure to get the ball away from Jaden Sancho to the other attackers is what cost Chelsea the game. This is where some of us, we were advocating. We were advocating for Moidrick. Now, another scenario in your, in your front there now. You will see how many players we build, we build up we are, when we are putting Liverpool under pressure. This is where many commentators, many pundits, they were, they were, they were you know, applauding Chelsea. This is where they were applauding Chelsea. Now, here you can see very clearly, Sancho was waiting for the ball there, and he got it anyway, but you see where uh, uh, Casado 
He's the one that's having a ball there. Kopama. Kopama, Nicholas Jackson, Madweke, they were in the area. They were in the area. You can see the position of Nicholas Jackson waiting for the ball. And even though he looks like he's offside, he is not offside. He knew exactly what he was doing. Now, look at where Noni Madweke is. Look at Jordan Sancho. The up from three. Now, how many defenders did, or how many people were defending for Liverpool? You can count it. One, two, three, four. In line with Madweke, Jackson, and Sancho, right? Come forward a little. You will now see another three set of players. In fact, another set of players. So, at a given time, Liverpool was defending with eight, nine players at every given time. Eight, nine players at every given time. Whenever Chelsea mount the pressure. It is only two players of Liverpool that are waiting for the ball to go on the counter. Two players of Liverpool. Chelsea now move forward our, our defenders. Levi Cowell. Levi Cowell. Levi Cowell. Uh, Tosin. And, you know, Rhys James. They are all up front. They all came forward. They were all up the field. That is the reason why Chelsea, each time Liverpool got a ball, successfully getting the ball, usually from Jenny Sancho, they are always getting this on the counter. And once they hit us on the counter, we always have a problem. That is why we nearly got a red card with Tosin. That is why we got a penalty against us. The counterplay of Liverpool, that was the strategy they used. They were able to silence Sancho. Sancho could not deliver. And Kopama, two players were always around him. I, you can see Kopama did a circle. Two players. He was, in the, he was sandwiched between two players, especially Curtis. And so it was difficult for Kopama to do his job, as we expected. Then the only person that was free that could actually get us the ball into the area was Jaden Sancho. And Jaden failed to do the job for us. I was hoping, even when the substitution was coming in, I was hoping that it would be Moidre that can bring a little bit of pace and more of crosses. You you and can also shoot. You will see Jaden Sancho on the ball. Dribbling in a very good position to shoot, he will not shoot. He's a very good player, but against a team like Liverpool, dear friend, it's not a game for Jaden Sancho. I'm happy I was able to get this video, I mean, these pictures to show you clearly. That is how come that we lost the game. Not that we were not in a position to win the game, we, we were in a position, we possessed the ball. From the beginning of the sketch till now, our formation was all right. It was spot on. And the move, our movement of the ball was spot on. If you watch the video, our movement of the ball and on the ball was spot on. The only challenge Chelsea had was on that left side of the field. It was a minus for us. Dear friends, I will not waste much of your time. I only brought you this for you to be able to know the difference of Chelsea's style of play and Liverpool. What did we do wrong? What did we do right? We were in a very good position to win this game. But, dear friends, I will end here at this very moment. I should be back with the next one exclusively. My dear friend, let's just take some few shout outs before I let you go this very morning. Very, very good morning to you, wherever you are. Well, the first one here uh, says, I'm a blue fan, but the penalty. I'm a blue fan, but the penalty is a penalty. But what of the pure red card against us? If that they give us the, pe uh, well, the PK, give us a red card. How do you think the match will be? It will be a 5-1 against us. 
But defenders, no work, bro. Give us no work, bro. Give us Liverpool defenders, not goalkeeper. We will win the match. So all for blame supposed to be defenders 60 and goalkeeper 40%. Oh, defenders mistake 60% and goalkeeper 40%. Thanks. MM no be at. MM no be at. Big shout out to you, MM no be at. Your point is very well made. That the truth is that if the ball did not come to the midfield, it will not get to the defenders also before the goalkeeper also be blamed. Yeah, but you see when we look at Errors of the goalkeeper. That is why we mostly emphasize more. There are some balls that the goalkeeper can easily block. You see, and in this case, Robert Sanchez, he panicked based on the first one that he gave out the penalty. Based on the, the first one that he nearly gave out the penalty. So he panicked. You understand it? He panicked. So, well, we learn from it. We move on. Big shout out to you anyway, my brother. M.M. No be Art from Nigeria. The next one says, Mr. Salons, for my, op my opinion, Enzo Maresca made a mistake by starting to right back in a match. Viega is doing great. He has to start against Liverpool. Moreover, our coach preferred Gusto in a left back coming to midfield. Maresca is supposed to start Enzo Fernandez, not Lavia. Because if you watch the game, you will discover that Palmer wasn't involved because Enzo Fernandez is not in the match. In the match, Maresca should have not made any changes in the midfield. You see, I think that he did the right thing. Lavia and Caicedo partnership worked perfectly. Why Palmer was not involved it was just I just showed right now. He was being man marked. He was being man marked by Curtis and one other player. So it made it difficult for him to, you know, he was. Liverpool coach said it clearly that Palmer is a very special player. So they prepared against Palmer. They prepared for Palmer. So they were able to tame Palmer. Are you getting it? It's not because Enzo Fernandez was not in the game. But well, it's also another argument to make. I don't even see Palmer's partnership with Enzo, whether it's working perfectly or not. But what I know is that. He was tamed by the Liverpool midfielder. He was man marked. Yes. Anyway, big shout out to my brother. Uh, what was the name again? Yongu Geoffrey. Geoffrey, big shout out to you. Wherever you are, please let me know your exact name and where you are watching us from. Yes, it's very important we know your name and where you are watching from. This one says, Mareska should have bring in Felix in replacement of Palmer and Moidrid for Sancho to break into Liverpool's defence. That is another point. Even Felix, we are not talking much about him. I'm not too sure why our coach is not making use of the skill set of uh, Kou Palmer. And like we said also, Moedric should have come in place of Sancho. Exactly so, dear friend. Big shout out to you, Uechuku from Nigeria, I, bet, I guess. He, he said, Chelsea did not create enough chances because Palmer was silenced at that game. And you did not analyze it the way you analyzed Sanchez, the goalkeeper. <laughs> Well, I think now I brought you the actual chart of the game. How the game went, right? As you saw it on your screen. Okay, big shout out to you, Hechuku. Okay. Uh, Anethi Moses says, My joy is that we play a fine football. And even the commentator said it so loud. Yes, we did not win, but I am proud to be a Chelsea, to be a Chelsea fan. In England, Chelsea has the largest number of keepers. Yet none is giving us what we want. Anefio Moses from Delta State, Nigeria. Anefio Moses from Delta State, Nigeria. This one says, Chelsea played very well, but our keeper and defense are not good. The same issue we all kept talking about. This one is Chioma OKK. Big shout out to you, Chioma OKK from Nigeria. The next one says, Serums, I disagree with you where our defenders, someone trapped ball in your box, 18 still shot and you are blaming the goalkeeper Chelsea team isn't ready yet must all be do the big team beat us I'm so disappointed at them <laughs> you don't have to be disappointed this is still a young team and we are developing big shout out to you anyway uh, the name is what Ugo 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 that is all I can see in your your username there all right 
Iechuku says Chelsea team was good, but Liverpool was more tactical. And Liverpool is stronger defense than Chelsea. That means Chelsea Mareska serious work in Chelsea defense. Exactly. So we need to do more work on our defense. The last but not the least says again Christopher Nkuku was used wrongly because he is not a winger. It's either he plays as number 10 or supporting striker. So don't paint him bad. In fact, he has he has rescued Chelsea in some crucial games. Well, I'm actually I will be the last person to paint Christopher Nkuku bad. All I said was that he was not into the game when he kept on. He did not, you know, like you said, he was put, you know, he played in the wrong position, partly. And that is why I said that we lost this game not because our player did not perform. We lost the game, I would say, from the fact that our coach got some of the personnel wrong. Liverpool knew Kopama very well. The man marked him. Sancho, even we, the ordinary, who are not coaches, we know very well from the onset that Sancho cannot penetrate the defense of Liverpool. Modric could have been best. Modric could have been best. You understand it? Please. All right. My dear friends, let me leave it here. I'll see you guys in the next one. You see me all. Shalom and peace.